people and welcome to another video. Today's video, I want to share some different ideas about how you can increase awareness of endometriosis with your family and close friends so that you can create healthy boundaries and have healthy positive discussions that can lead to them giving you the support and the respect that you need during this time. talking to your family and friends about endometriosis and about and increasing their awareness about what you're going through and what this condition is, you want to make sure that you have honest and open conversations with them. So make sure that you plan ahead and you talk with them and you let them know that you want to have a sit down conversation and explain to them and talk with them about what is going on with you and your health and your health journey and let them know that you wanna kind of get everything out because you want to get their support and you want them to understand what is going on with you and you also want to be able to answer their questions. So planning a specific time where you can sit down and talk with them about all of these things and that they can answer questions in a neutral and relaxed environment is so important when it comes to being successful at properly having these conversations and maybe expressing your feelings and answering their questions in this kind of safe space. So maybe having a nice dinner at home or having some one-on-one -on -one time with a person or doing things where it's very intimate and it's a safe, neutral, and positive environment is going to be really beneficial to having these very open and in-depth conversations. And the second part of creating that environment that's going to foster honesty and openness is to make sure that you're in a good space mentally and emotionally to have these conversations. So it wouldn't be a good idea to try to have this conversation and talk with them about endometriosis and try to increase their awareness and answering their questions if you're having a high pain day, if your mental and emotional health just isn't where it should be. You would want to make sure you're doing it on a day where you can easily manage your pain where you're mentally and emotionally in a good space and you can possibly handle tough questions or tough subject matter and you're not in a place where you're overly sensitive or hypersensitive and you're going to take the things that they're saying or just take the direction that the conversation may go in a negative space. Now, when it comes to dialogue, something that is super important is to make sure that you are not monopolizing the conversation, so to speak. You do want to explain what your condition is, explain what is going on with your health and well-being, and kind of give them some inside information as to what you're experiencing and what you're feeling and how it's impacting and affecting your daily life, your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, and all of those things. But you also want to leave some open space for them to ask questions, to also express their feelings and their thoughts and their concerns so that there's a back and forth. And creating that kind of environment is, I believe, really beneficial because it allows them to feel like they're active in the conversation and that they're also active with being more a part of your health journey instead of just being on the outside looking in. And it makes them a better and more well-informed and well-intentioned ally for you. And you should also come with a neutral mindset and a neutral 
place emotionally and mentally because they're probably going to ask questions that are going to be a little bit ignorant. They're probably going to have some myths or misconceptions that they believe regarding endometriosis and regarding what you're going through. And these things that people say or the questions that they ask can be kind of hurtful because they just don't know. So coming from a neutral space and not taking it too personal since they are trying to learn more and they are trying to see what you're talking about and understand where you're coming from is going to be super important. That's why it is necessary that before you have these conversations, you make sure that you're in a solid place mentally and emotionally because again, when people don't understand things and they're ignorant and they're full of good intentions, the likelihood that they're going to say things that are triggering or upsetting or just plain outdated or wrong is very high but you can always let them know why that is wrong and explain it to them so that they will know for the future and they won't continue to make the same mistakes over and over again which is going to make them a better support system for you and a better ally for you. And the next thing that you're going to want to do as part of this conversation is you're going to want to discuss your boundaries, why you're eliciting these boundaries, why you're making changes when it comes to your health, your lifestyle, and your wellness, and what you are going to need from them to enlist these healthy boundaries and these healthy changes. Because again, they just may not understand why it's so important to you, or they may not understand why them doing things a certain way or what have you is going to be triggering and hurtful for you. So discussing specific triggers, emotions, and feelings that you're going through and that you're dealing with is going to be important. Also letting them know certain actions, behaviors, phrases, words, things that they say that may also be hurtful for you right now during your journey because you're at a more sensitive space and letting them know why these topics or these words or phrases are off limits for you and why you're just not comfortable with those topics, phrases, or types of conversation and also letting them know when it comes to maybe your nutrition or when it comes to your lifestyle habits, why you're maybe not going to be as social and what it means when you have to decline an invitation. It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want to spend time with them or you do not want to visit with them. It just could mean that you have a flare up and you're not going to be able to be present with them in that moment because you're not going to be at your fullest capacity. So it's important that they understand that and that they not take offense to that and they give you some grace in space because you are dealing with a painful and inflammatory condition so a lot of chronic pain comes with that and you're gonna have to deal with a lot of different flare-ups and a lot of different side effects and symptoms because of that so you want them to understand that so that they can give you the space that you need and the respect and the grace so that when you're going through those tough seasons and you're dealing with a lot of chronic pain they understand why you're probably not going to be as present and probably not going to be as social and be as in their life and it's really because you just don't have the capacity to do that additionally on top of that while you're telling them your boundaries and the and the different changes that you're going to make in your life you also want to make sure you let them know how they can best support you letting them know that just because you have a flare-up doesn't mean that maybe you don't want to see them ever but letting them know that this is how you can support me when i'm having a flare-up and i'm not able to go out Maybe give me a video call, maybe um, coming by and giving me a care package or just spending some time with me and watching a movie. Just letting them know how they can be present and they can best support you during those times and during this entire journey is going to make them feel more valuable to you and it's also going to help to make them feel more connected with you as well. And lastly, when it comes to having these types of conversations, you want to approach them with zero expectations meaning you have to understand that 
there is a huge chance that they just may not understand all that you're going through and they may not be able to digest it and accept it because for some people it is a lot to understand when it comes to chronic illness and conditions like endometriosis and the pain they just can't fathom it because they've never experienced it so it may take them some time to understand where you're coming from and to actually come around to what you're trying to say and they may need their space but you have to respect that the most important thing is that you made yourself clear and that you've explained everything that you 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 are going through and that you have let them know what you need from them and you've also discussed and shared the boundaries that you're enlisting in your life the changes that you're making and why and why it's so important that they respect these changes and respect these boundaries and at the end of the day respect you Furthermore, if after having this conversation and letting them know how you feel, where you're at on your health journey, what you need from them and your boundaries, they continue afterwards to disrespect you, um, not meet you halfway, not respect your boundaries, they continue to push you beyond your boundaries and continue to just trample past them, you probably need to revisit yourself what space and capacity that they're gonna have in your everyday life. Because it could just be that they are not going to be a safe person or a safe space for you during this journey and you may need to decrease the amount of time that you spend around them and that's absolutely okay you what's most important is that you do what is best for your mental emotional and physical health during your healing and recovery journey if a person isn't able to be there with you and go through that with you because they are not willing to respect you and give you the things that you're asking for and meet you halfway, then it's they're just not going to be there during this particular season in your life. You can always revisit it at a later date and see if you're able to mend that and meet halfway. But right now you have to truly, truly, truly prioritize your mental health, emotional health, and physical health and well-being above all else. And it's also important to remember that you don't have to and you don't owe anyone the right to express or talk about or divulge anything regarding your health journey, your endometriosis, or any of those things. If you do not feel comfortable discussing specific aspects of your health journey with people, you completely don't have to. No is a full statement. So if you're not willing to go there with them, just tell them no, and you don't owe them an explanation.